As a Christian woman, you want a man who can understand your insecurities, who will be patient with you as you work through them, and a man who wants to grow with you in a meaningful, deep relationship. The best way to find a man like that is to become a woman like that. Just like you, men also have insecurities. And if you can show him that you're patient as he works through them, you understand, what he's going through, and you too want to be in a committed relationship where you work through insecurities rather than just leaving when they show up, then this type of guy is going to be attracted to you. Last week, I talked about three insecurities a man has about pursuing a woman. So this week, it's basically part two to that video, and I'm going to give you six total signs about insecurities, three about being in dating, three about transitioning to marriage. Number one, will she cheat? When a man does commit to a woman in dating, he's no longer worried about gaining her affection and attention. Rather, now he's more concerned about losing it. Now, unless a man has past trauma in this area where maybe he was betrayed or has something in his childhood that makes him especially sensitive to a woman cheating on him and, and fearing that, then really this isn't going to be too hard to put a man at ease in this insecurity that he has. All you really need to do is not play with fire. In other words, don't spend time alone with other men. Don't give other men time and attention that should be given to a man in a romantic relationship with you. If there's some sort of boundary issue that you have with other men where you feel like, well, I should be able to have a bunch of guy friends or I should be able to still have my best guy friend who's not my boyfriend, but you know, we're still, we're still so close. I just can't give this person up. Those types of things are a sign of mistrust to a man. And maybe you're on the other saying, other side saying, well, he should trust me. What's the big deal? I'm not cheating. I, I He shouldn't be so controlling. Well, the fact is, if he is dating you, that means he does trust you. But he's also seeing how you're going to handle his trust. How are you going to steward that trust? And by you being too close to other men, he sees that as a sign of disrespect to his trust. It's not about does he trust you or not? Or you're just, you know, I'm I'm not just going to cheat on him with my guy friends. That may be true. But he's looking at that as something that's just unwise. It just doesn't make sense. Why do that? Ephesians 5, 3 states, But among you there must not even be a hint of sexual immorality. Avoid even the appearance of unfaithfulness. Because again, this is a different type of relationship. And if you have boundary issues where you don't understand the difference between a friend and a boyfriend, that looks like you being unwise and not mature enough to handle his trust. Men and women, there's always going to be an extra dynamic between them. And someone who doesn't understand that, it just feels like too much of a risk for a man to really give her his full trust because he's worried these other relationships are gonna blossom into something else so why put myself at risk like that? Number two, she's going to reject me once I tell her about my past porn use. This is a big one for Christian guys. I get emails more often than you would imagine about this concern. You know, it's not a weekly email or anything, but you know, every, uh, multiples every year, guys are asking me, how should I address this? And I wish you could just be with a guy who didn't have this issue and, and you're maybe you're just saying, well, well, that's an issue. I'm just not even gonna be with him. Well, statistically, that's gonna be very difficult for you at this point in history. Because unfortunately, this is a silent cancer sweeping through the world, but also the church. Men are struggling with porn right now. And so it's very likely that you do end up with a man who is repenting and is no longer engaging with porn, but has had a significant history with it. Thus, it's also always a temptation that he could go back to it. And any mature, humble man's gonna know, I gotta be uh, on guard here because it got me once and I know it can get me again. So this is a big topic. I'm not gonna fully unpack here because it could be a series of videos in and of itself. But here's a few tips if you're in a relationship with a man 
and this subject comes up. Don't ask for a lot of details. There's no reason to fill your mind with pointless information. Don't be his accountability partner. He should have other men in his life who he can talk to about this on an ongoing basis. If he's repenting now and not actively engaging in porn use right now, he can still be ready for a relationship with a woman in dating and marriage. It's the man who's actively using now that is not in a good place for a relationship. So if he's rejected the old nature, and put on the new nature, and he's actively in that process of sanctification with Christ, those are good signs of a mature man. For more on this topic, you can watch my video called Why, When, and How to Talk About Past Sexual Sins in a New Christian Relationship. Number three, does she add value to my life or am I happier alone? A man fears being with a woman who wants to change him. And this is one of the reasons his hobbies and his work are a testing ground in the dating relationship. It's not because he loves his hobbies more than you or his job more than you. Rather, these are areas of his life that he knows are part of his masculinity and thus you may not understand. You probably aren't going to love all the same hobbies as him and maybe you don't understand why he spends so much time at work but he knows this is a part of his masculinity. These are expressions of his manhood. And so when you reject these things, complain about how much time he spends on them, or you know, you just don't understand why he would waste his time playing basketball with his buddies. This again, is not about these things. It's about you rejecting something that expresses something about him. So it feels like a rejection of him. Now, certainly in many cases, there is an imbalance. So this is something a lot of women struggle with because men are doing this other stuff and it feels like they're not focusing on the woman. And that may be true. There are times in life where a man is spending too much time at work or just maybe not doing enough for the woman in conjunction with how much time he needs to spend at work. Maybe his hobbies are out of balance. Those are all things you may need to bring up. But rather than changing him, this may be a sign that it's just a mismatch. Because if you have to change him too much, and if he has to adapt too much of the things that he likes, in the long run, you're building up resentment towards yourself from him. And sometimes it's better just to accept this isn't the right match because we have a different view of these things. And there's going to be some woman out there who is okay with how much he works and doesn't isn't bothered by those hobbies. And there's going to be some man out there who does have more time for you than this man may have. And so you just need to accept that rather than trying to change him. So now let's talk about the insecurities a man has when going from dating into marriage? What prevents him from making that leap with a woman? Number four, is she just on her best behavior until we get married? Single men are watching the internet videos made by older men who've been burned, or that's the story they're presenting, that they've been burned in marriage marriages. And so these older men are instructing younger men just don't even go down that road, buddy. It's the courts are against you. She's going to get the house. She's going to get the kids. She's going to get all your money. Look at me. It happened to me. It can happen to you. And so these types of influences in our modern day and age are tapping into an insecurity that most men already have and women have too, right? Because in reality, it does happen. People do change when they get married and some people are on their best behavior in dating on both sides, men and women. So this, this taps into a fear that's already there. So there's no trick or technique here. I'm not gonna be like, hey, this is how you deceive him. This is how you show him this. You are gonna be the same even though you're gonna change. <laughs> what you really need to do is be authentic. And the relationship works when a Christian man and a Christian woman are both so committed to Christ that even when the relationship gets hard, because it always does at some point, they stay the same and continue to love each other ultimately because 
Christ is their unifier. They're, they're not just there because you act a certain way, therefore I contractually will treat you a certain way. Because of Christ, a man and woman can offer each other grace and continue to love each other even when life changes, things change, and we're all going to change. We all get older and things change, but the commitment, the love, the relationship itself can stay the same in, in its essence because of the bond of Christian unity. And so it's all about having an authentic love. You have to be an authentic woman to attract that, a t that type of authentic man. Number five, will she want to have sex with me or will it just be her duty in marriage? Sex is really important to a man and it's not because he's just obsessed with a woman's body, or at least it shouldn't be that. Rather, when a man is walking with Christ, healthy, repenting of lust and all that idolatry of sex, the way that he often connects with his wife in love is through the sexual experience. It's not just about the sex, it's about this is one of the ways he feels loved and that he can offer love. It's just one of the ways God has wired a man's heart to uh, receive that. And it's the same for a woman, but I think it's a little bit different in areas that we won't get into right now. So all that to say, a man worries that she's just gonna have sex because she knows it's the right thing to do. She's not really gonna want to have sex. Because again, it's not just about the sex, it's about the love. And a man isn't going to feel loved and satisfied in the sexual relationship with his wife if he feels like it's just her duty and she doesn't really want that. So in dating, this can be difficult because obviously as Christians, we're to reject all sexual temptation, we're not to engage in any type of premarital sex. So I'm not encouraging you to, you know, have crude conversations or talk or letting him know how much you would want that in marriage. I'm not saying to address it like that, but what I am saying is that we do sense things in each other in relationships and if there is something in you that's blocking you from being able to enjoy sex in that category of a marriage because of past trauma or some sort of bad teaching in the Christian environment that you were raised in, then those are things you really need to work on with a counselor or a wise Christian mentor because he's going to sense that that divide there. And so if you're a healthy person in that area, it's not gonna be too hard to, for this to just connect. He's gonna know, she really likes me, she's attracted to me. When we get married, you know, we're gonna be able to engage in mutually wanted sex. But if there is something in you that is pushing against that and is worried about that, it's going to translate somehow. He's going to sense it somehow. It's going to feel like there's some sort of barrier there and that you're not romantic or, you know, physically attracted to him and aren't looking forward to that part of marriage. He's going to sense that. And number six, can I make her happy? Honestly, a man isn't overly concerned with a woman trying to make him happy. Of course, there needs to be mutual thought and attention and effort in that area. And it feels good as a man when, you know, your wife does something, you know, specifically to try to make you happy. That's, that's really healthy and good. But way more than that, a man wants to know that he can make his wife happy. If he feels like every time he tries to do something, it's never enough. She's disappointed. She critiques it. That's just killer to a man because he doesn't, is, again, he's not interested in make me happy. It makes him feel masculine when he can provide and offer her things and she's happy about it. So when a man makes effort to make a woman happy and she responds positively and it actually does make her happy, this encourages him to do more things for her and because it, it was there was a payoff there. So if a man doesn't feel like this woman he can make happy, he's not gonna marry her. But if he does sense that, he's gonna be happy and eager to marry her. Here's part one to this video, if you missed it, where I talk about three insecurities a man has about pursuing a woman. And it's important to know these insecurities because if you step on them and feed them, it will actually prevent him from pursuing you. I'm Mark from applygodsword.com. Until next time, God bless.